Good morning and welcome to Dalina Sadam's Investor Conference webinar. Today we will be hearing a presentation from Marco Raid, who serves as the Chief Financial Officer at Dalina Sadam on Dalina Sadam's financial results in the first quarter of 2019. Before we start the presentation, I would like to remind you that you are welcome to ask questions from the speaker by using the question box on the right hand side of your screen. Without further ado, I would like to welcome Marco to deliver the presentation. Good morning. At least uh, uh, in Tallinn, we have a great sunny day. So it's good to, to have you listening uh, on the update for Port of Tallinn first quarter results. Um, I, I need to apologize uh, in the beginning that uh, Waldo is not uh, with us. He uh, is uh, in St. Petersburg uh, trying to boost the uh, passenger flows uh, visiting uh, the port of St. Petersburg and discussing uh, different uh, development uh, opportunities. So I will be uh, doing the presentation uh, for today. Without further ado, uh, let's move to highlights uh, of the first quarter and um, something we already uh, uh, discussed uh, in the last uh, webinar was uh, uh, the maintenance of uh, several passenger vessels which took place uh, in the uh, first quarter mostly in January February uh, some of them also in March so uh, uh, this temporary uh, removal of vessels from the line of service uh, has uh, impacted our uh, passenger figures, also total vessel call numbers, and of course, uh, first quarter revenues. But this uh, is a, a regular event, uh, one time uh, impact uh, uh, only on the first quarter. Normally, uh, the vessels have two and a half and, and five year cycles when they go on the maintenance and usually it's done during the first quarter because that's the slowest quarter for, for passengers. So this is, um, this is the bad news uh, which will or has been followed by the good news that one of our uh, uh, ferry operators, Ekara, has announced that uh, they are having plans to introduce a second ROPEX vessel uh, between uh, uh, Finland and uh, Estonia. Uh, from the Finland side, it will be uh, departing and arriving in Vosari harbor. Uh, in, in Estonian side, it's not yet uh, clear Will it be in the old city harbor at the city center or in Muga? The discussions are still ongoing uh, because the vessel has a, a focus on uh, Roro cargo, but also uh, accommodates passengers. So it's a question whether it's more a cargo or a passenger vessel and, uh, and in a longer perspective we see this vessel going to Muga um, but it's still under uh, discussion whether in short term it would be coming to old city harbor or can we immediately um, direct this, this vessel to Muga but at least uh, um, they have uh, positive plans and, uh, and additional vessels always have positive had a positive impact on the volumes as well. So we are very glad to, to hear this uh, about this uh, development. On cargo volumes, uh, uh, the first quarter was uh, a bit challenging, uh, mainly uh, liquid bulk volumes in the beginning of the year, especially in January, were uh, decreasing when compared to the last year. However, we have seen now in the uh, next months uh, some stabilization in the volumes. Um, 
also uh, uh, our biggest uh, liquid bulk operator, Wopak uh, EOS, was acquired by Livaton. So there's a new owner uh, with uh, new plans. Uh, we see this uh, as a positive uh, development, hopefully leading to uh, more stable uh, cargo flows, but still uh, uh, the liquid bulk market as a whole is quite uh, volatile so it's hard to to make uh, long-term estimates uh, um, nothing has changed in terms of uh, fierce price competition um, the cargo owners are uh, uh, trying to get the cheapest uh, price possible therefore we need to in order to play, uh, play that game or be in the game, we need to be flexible in terms of pricing. So there's uh, continuous uh, price pressure on revenue per ton in liquid cargo. So we try to maintain the volumes uh, as much as possible. However, we might need to compromise uh, in terms of revenue per ton. And uh, as we don't make uh, official estimates it's actually really hard uh, even for ourselves to to have an annual estimate the visibility uh, in, in volumes is maybe one month two month maximum uh, we don't uh, know what will happen in the in the second half of this year but we hope that this uh, new player uh, Liverton uh, will, will also bring additional activity in, in, in liquid bulk. But in addition to liquid bulk, uh, this pass, uh, passenger vessels maintenance also impacted uh, the volumes of raw raw cargo in the first uh, months uh, because the vessels were not in service. So the cargo volumes, uh, uh, raw raw volumes also declined. Uh, we see uh, a clear, clear recovery there uh, and the volume of containers and dry bulk a little bit increased as well. Also positive news uh, with regards to uh, our icebreaker Botnica. We have uh, now received official confirmation from Buff Finland that um, the summer period work in the uh, northern uh, of Canada uh, will be uh, also continued this year. So we expect overall to have at least a comparable result in the other segment for Botnica as far as was for last year. On the ferry segment, uh, we are happy to uh, say that uh, Estonian state has also ordered uh, a little bit more than 500 additional ferry trips on Saarema line for the summer peak period. So basically uh, we see this as the same scenario uh, as was last year, meaning uh, we will charter uh, one additional uh, vessel for those three months. It's, uh, it will take place mainly uh, from the second half of June, July and August. So for the, those three months, we will have also uh, additional vessel uh, chartered uh, and, and uh, we will carry out the service with uh, five uh, vessels and we'll receive additional revenue, uh, which is then comparable uh, to the agreement that we also had in 2018. Also on the ferry segment, uh, we had one uh, court case uh, uh, with the previous uh, operator, Saare Malava company and uh, Weinamere Linid, where they claimed uh, uh, TS Laivad and our second total company TS shipping for 24 million euros. Um, however, as the court requested uh, uh, a deposit uh, to cover the costs of the uh, um, dispute and that the, the deposit was not paid. So this court case has now officially been dismissed 
uh, as of the end of uh, March. So, so there is no longer uh, such claim uh, against uh, TS Lavat. But as we uh, estimated, uh, the outcome um, of this uh, uh, claim to be uh, uh, unlikely uh, positive. Uh, so we did not have any reserves for this claim. Thus, this uh, dismissal uh, has no impact uh, on the financial uh, figures uh, for the group. Uh, we did not have any reserve for this. We have a little bit uh, increased activity in terms of investments, mainly that relates to the reconstruction of passenger terminal D, uh, which was started last year. And also we are happy to announce that uh, on Tuesday, the annual general meeting uh, agreed uh, on the dividend payment for this year. Uh, in the amount of 35.2 million euros, uh, 0.134 euros per share. And we see that uh, based on the first quarter results, we are very well uh, tracked with our dividend policy also for this year uh, to pay at least 30 million euros. Uh, and we are uh, keeping our own internal uh, estimates and targets uh, that we have set for this year. On this slide, uh, you can see uh, the volumes uh, for cargo and passenger by different uh, cargo types and, uh, and passenger routes. As already explained, uh, uh, the main decrease took place in, in liquid bulk, uh, um, other cargo types, uh, had uh, a smaller effect there. We hope uh, that liquid vo uh, volumes uh, will recover. Uh, however, visibility is quite short there. Uh, overall, we had 6% decrease. Um, we hope to uh, reverse this, this trend in the, in the coming quarters. Uh, on the passenger numbers, uh, the decrease was 7%. Uh, mainly uh, uh, volume wise, it comes from Tallinn Helsinki route, but also from Tallinn Stockholm. Both of these uh, routes had uh, uh, several vessels on maintenance, altogether five vessels. So three of them in the uh, Helsinki route and two of them in the Stockholm route. So this has clearly impacted the volumes as well. And we see uh, and hope uh, for recovery on the on the uh, coming quarters, as there are no no longer any planned maintenance and and one additional uh, vessel hopefully starting from uh, mid this year. On financial figures, mm, uh, the decline in the passenger numbers. And uh, cargo volumes, of course, impacted uh, as well our revenues. Overall, we had 3% decrease. Uh, the revenues for the ferry segment and uh, for other uh, increased. That's mainly due to uh, um, inflation component in the tariffs. Uh, um, the ferry tariffs are uh, uh, adjusted to fuel price fluctuations, also on annual play, uh, basis for salary and consumer price changes, and also the uh, charter rate for Botnica is uh, adjusted for changes in inflation. So even though the, the volumes are uh, almost at the same level as uh, previous year, um, a little bit increase in revenue has taken place there. Adjusted EBITDA uh, fell by 4%, uh, mainly caused by the decrease in, in revenues uh, and, and EBITDA margin changed by 0 0.7 percentage points, still, still being quite strong at uh, 59. 
1%. Uh, and uh, if uh, on the right hand side we look uh, segment wise, so uh, we can see that uh, the passenger harbors uh, EBITDA has also declined, but little less than, uh, than revenues. So we have uh, had some uh, cost efficiency here. Also last year we had one time uh, uh, costs uh, due to the uh, um, uh, execution of this uh, smart port application which are not recurring uh, this year so so we are a little bit more cost efficient on the on the passenger harbor side uh, on cargo harbors uh, the decline in uh, in uh, revenues has also impacted uh, uh, EBITDA uh, and and on the ferry segment uh, we are happy to see that uh, that we have uh, been able to increase uh, our profitability. Uh, so both uh, revenues have increased and and costs are have a little bit decreased. So so leading to uh, increased efficiency uh, overall. And uh, in Botnica, uh, even though the revenues have been increased, uh, e adjusted EBITDA decreased that's due to uh, changes in the uh, uh, salaries which were frozen for last three years and uh, changed uh, in May 2018 for the uh, seamen and and also uh, a little bit impacted by uh, repairs that uh, have been done at the vessel to uh, prepare it for the summer uh, season. Overall, uh, our operating profit has decreased by 7% uh, in uh, being uh, um, a little bit less than the uh, decrease in, uh, in revenues and also uh, profit for the period uh, has decreased uh, by uh, approximately 800,000 euros, which is a bit less than, than the decrease in revenues. Um, and in investments, uh, uh, we see that the amount has doubled, still a little uh, bit behind our own expectations um, as we try to get uh, other investments in passenger harbors uh, up and, and going as well. So we expect increased activity in the second half for this uh, year. Going further on cash flow and, and financial position, um, also good and strong results. Um, the figures uh, for cash flow from operating activities have decreased, uh, but this is due to uh, the income tax that we paid on. Uh, uh, dividends uh, that were paid out in December 2018. That was uh, 20, remaining 20 million for the Estonian government. Uh, the income tax on those dividends, uh, which was uh, uh, about 5 million euros, was payable in January 2019. Thus, this is the main um, uh, main item impacting. Uh, cash flows from operating activities. Um, cash used in, in investing activities almost uh, the same as the quarter, first quarter last year. Uh, and uh, then uh, uh, about uh, 3 million positive contribution uh, from cash uh, used for financing activities. Uh, in 2018, we had uh, a bank overdraft um, which we uh, paid back uh, and which we did not have this year. So thus the, the decrease in, in uh, paying back the debt and, and uh, interest. So overall uh, for 2019 net cash flows of 7.7 uh, .7 million. Um, and on the right hand side, you can also see that the cash balance uh, has increased from, from uh, 43 million as at the uh, year-end 
2018 to uh, give it more than 50 million as at the end of 31st March. Uh, net debt uh, at the end of uh, first quarters has considerably decreased. Uh, that's due to uh, payback of uh, uh, of loans, but mostly due to the increase in cash balance, which now uh, will decrease when we uh, pay out the declared dividends uh, in the beginning of June. Uh, with this, uh, I uh, have concluded the short review of the results, and uh, and now we are uh, happily waiting for your questions, uh, uh, which were explained in the beginning of the presentation. Thank you, uh, Marco, for the presentation. Now we will proceed with the questions in the order they were received. I would like to remind you that you can send in questions using the question box on the right side of the screen. You will be now given a couple of minutes to submit in the questions.
Okay, we uh, will start answering the questions. Uh, if if uh, there's something uh, you want to additionally ask, you can uh, send the, uh, them as as I uh, answer. So we'll we'll get to them at the at the end. But um, uh, we'll start with the questions that were sent uh, uh, before the uh, uh, webinar start. So uh, uh, we have a question, uh, can we provide Outlook comments by segments and in what uh, divisions do we expect uh, uh, this year's sales and EBITDA adjusted can grow? Uh, I already tried a little bit to explain the situation uh, when uh, uh, I commented the passenger numbers and, and cargo volumes. Um, so, uh, uh, the most uh, the difficult ones to predict and challenging ones uh, are the passenger harbors and, and cargo harbor segment. Um, on the passenger volumes, uh, uh, we see that uh, after the first quarter, now at least the ferries are, uh, are in service, so the regularity is, uh, is the same as last year. Um, still, there are uh, questions about whether we have uh, increased uh, or reached uh, the peak uh, in the total volume or not, and, and can it grow uh, further? Uh, of course, if uh, Ekeros uh, new vessel will be uh, in service, we hope uh, uh, that this uh, uh, definitely uh, will have a positive impact on the revenues, uh, hopefully also on the passenger numbers. So um, uh, we, we hope to reach at least last year's numbers. Um, will it be a new record? Uh, hard to tell. It's quite uh, challenging in terms of, uh, of the number of passengers. Uh, also, what we need to bear in mind is uh, uh, the fact that uh, if uh, Ekeros new uh, uh, Ropax vessel uh, will come to the old city harbor, then it will uh, have positive impact on the passenger segment, uh, if it uh, is going to uh, make visits to, to uh, Muga Harbor, that then will contribute to the uh, cargo harbor segment. So, depending on the destination as well, uh, the uh, revenues from that additional vessel can uh, turn up in one or the other segment. Uh, on uh, cargo volumes, uh, uh, we uh, our goal is to uh, reach the levels uh, uh, of last year, which uh, were exceptionally uh, good, uh, specifically in terms of, of liquid bulk. So uh, uh, we would be uh, conservative in terms of uh, projecting growth uh, there. Uh, and as I said, uh, the competition uh, is quite fierce and, uh, and also price competition in terms of, of cost. Um, we do hope uh, and see that um, the ferry segment and the other, which is mainly Botnica, uh, will have uh, moderate growth in revenues. And that's mainly due to the uh, uh, adjustment of the rates uh, uh, with uh, inflation. Uh, we are not yet uh, certain uh, uh, what the volumes uh, for Botnica summertime work will be. Would it be a longer period or shorter period? That uh, depends on the ice conditions uh, um, around the mine. And, uh, and we'll see that as we um, move further. But, uh, but we hope that, uh, that it will uh, be about uh, on the same level as, as last year in terms of duration. Um, then we have a question about quarter two and full year outlook for liquid bulk. Uh, as I already explained, uh, it's hard to make uh, longer term uh, estimates. Uh, we have seen some recovery. Will that continue in the coming months? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Um, then we have a question about real estate. What has happened since December? 31st uh, last year, 
Um, we currently are uh, or have uh, filed to uh, Tallinn uh, City uh, request to start uh, five detailed uh, planning processes which covers the uh, uh, port area. Um, this work has uh, been finished by us. Now we are waiting for the city to initiate the detailed plans uh, or planning uh, process. Um, that will most likely happen after the summer. So um, not likely we'll have positive news on the second quarter, but hopefully in third quarter uh, we have the decision, official decision from the city to initiate these detailed plans and as we have said this process uh, will then take some two to three years uh, to uh, go through. Uh, of course uh, uh, we don't know that in certainty but that's just our best estimate for the time. And, uh, and also there was a question about the, the volume uh, that can be developed uh, for real estate at the old city harbor. Uh, this is something that uh, will be uh, detailed um, and will be cleared after the detailed plans are approved. That's why the detailed planning process uh, is needed because that's where the maximum flooring and uh, building density uh, will be set. But as uh, we have communicated before, um, we estimate that uh, the total build-up area of the existing free land areas is about 300,000 square meters uh, and uh, uh, that can be uh, cross square meters and that, that can be uh, extended with uh, additional land reclamation if that is to be done by additional 160,000 square meters. So uh, uh, currently, uh, if uh, we want to estimate something, then on the basis of existing land, uh, 300 uh, cross square meters is the figure uh, that we use. But this uh, uh, is just a very approx estimate, and, and we can be much more, more specific after the detailed plans are approved. Um, then we have a question, uh, despite the 6% higher number of cargo vessel calls, uh, cargo harbors, vessel dues declined 9.5% uh, nine, uh, year on year. Uh, can we explain that? Mm, yes, uh, um, the tariffs for different uh, cargo vessels are not the same. So, um, it's important to uh, uh, also uh, take into consideration what types of vessels. So, for example, tankers uh, which carry liquid bulk have uh, higher uh, higher uh, uh, tariff per cross tonnage than, for example, dry bulk vessels. So, if there's a decline in uh, in uh, uh, tankers or tanker calls and uh, increase in uh, dry bulk vessel calls, uh, it can uh, happen that uh, dues uh, decrease uh, more even though the total number of uh, calls uh, is increasing. Also that little bit depends on the uh, size of the vessels, uh, uh, how much uh, uh, are they loaded, are they fully loaded, half loaded, uh, so things like that impact uh, and as we had in the first uh, quarter uh, quite uh, a sharp decline in liquid bulk uh, volumes uh, uh, this was offset by increase uh, in other uh, vessel calls uh, and thus the uh, with lower uh, tariffs so the total you know, for cargo harbors uh, uh, segment uh, did actually uh, decline. What were the main reasons behind decline in liquid cargo? Uh, what about the continued decline in dry bulk? Are there any countermeasures taken to stem the decline? Um, 
the liquid cargo market uh, is continuously uh, uh, project basis or uh, uh, let's say uh, basis on based on certain patches that are agreed and and uh, tenders that are made um, so it, it it does fluctuate from month to month depending on uh, how our operators uh, have been able to perform in those uh, tenders and and what the cargo owners uh, preferences uh, are uh, with regards to storing so so we cannot uh, outpoint any uh, one particular item behind this uh, uh, decline um, it is and it is going to be fluctuating quarter on quarter going forward as well however we do see uh, increased activity and uh, uh, more sustainable activity in terms of dry bulk uh, we have some uh, uh, new uh, cargo owners uh, uh, who are using Muga harbors, so uh, so we see uh, increased activity there, and and we are uh, working closely to uh, uh, increase the Estonian exports. Of course, the volumes there are not so high to uh, offset the liquid bulk uh, uh, decline, but uh, nevertheless. Uh, um, we are working with uh, many smaller projects uh, in, in dry bulk uh, to, to get uh, those volumes uh, increasing and fertilizers uh, have been quite uh, stable which is uh, a positive uh, news for us uh, then we have a question about the cost income ratio trend so as I explained in the uh, uh, cargo harbor segment it's definitely challenging. Uh, we see that uh, cost pressure uh, is uh, high, uh, specifically in, in liquid bulk. Uh, there's a lot of competition, a lot of price competition, so we don't expect uh, uh, revenue per ton to increase there. Um, on the passenger side, uh, it's quite uh, stable uh, if, if you compare uh, revenue uh, per passengers. Um, and uh, in the ferry segment, uh, we do see um, there are uh, ways to further increase efficiency. So, so uh, we want our operating margins even further to increase there. And uh, for Botnica, uh, it does depend uh, on what, uh, how many days of uh, charter for this year we are able to achieve. As was uh, seen already in the last year, um, any impacts in revenue for Botnica tend to uh, go straight to the bottom line. So um, we don't see uh, any huge um, possibilities there to optimize further the costs that we have but uh, we are working on uh, increasing revenues as much as possible if we are able to then we also uh, increase our efficiency uh, in, in the other segment um, next question uh, uh, was growth in containerized cargo driven by specific triggers or could it be uh, explained by seasonality and or, or other factors? Um, we are not aware of any specific projects behind that. Uh, we do see that uh, HHLA, uh, which acquired uh, Transitic Escus uh, or the container terminal uh, in Muga, is uh, now actively um, uh, working uh, with uh, shipping lines in order to uh, uh, increase the volumes and uh, and we are uh, uh, we have positive expectations uh, with, with regards to their ability as they are a much bigger international player uh, to achieve this goal so so we would contribute this growth to to their uh, good uh, job um, what is our uh, next question? What is our current view on uh, 
uh, Estonia and, and Finland passenger flows for this year going forward? Uh, do we expect overall decline to continue? Uh, as I already explained, hard to estimate. It's definitely challenging uh, to keep the uh, volumes growing. Um, luckily, uh, uh, and as I said, uh, Waldo today is, for example, in St. Petersburg, also discussing uh, uh, ways to uh, increase the passenger traffic, both in, in liner service uh, and, and also cruise. Uh, also, our uh, ferry operators are uh, putting uh, more and more emphasis uh, on a segmented uh, targeting uh, of, of customers. So trying to offer for different age groups, uh, uh, different types of uh, activities or reasons for traveling. Um, so we are fighting uh, heavily, uh, but will it result in an increase or uh, will we just uh, maintain last uh, year's figures? Um, we'll need to wait and see. And then, of course, the, the uh, second vessel by Ekera, we hope will have a positive impact on the total numbers. Uh, next question, are the incent incentives taken in conjunction with the line operators to um, stem the passenger decline on Tallinn Helsinki and Tallinn Stockholm? Uh, this one I already explained. Yes, there are. Uh, but we'll need to wait and see how, how uh, efficient they are. Uh, still, um, uh, the uh, uh, passengers are quite uh, sensitive to pricing. So uh, if good uh, pricing and offers are made, then, then we see that uh, increased passenger activity is uh, achieved. So that's uh, also uh, a big factor. Um, and the question continues on the former would you say that decline is driven by fewer visits of Finns or fewer visits or, uh, of regular Estonian passengers um, uh, more in Finns but also a little bit uh, for Estonians so it's uh, uh, both sides that uh, that need to be worked on uh, next question, how is the schedule looking for summer season in both passenger and cruise business? How does it compare to last year? Um, on the passenger uh, the traffic, uh, uh, as already been said, uh, we hope that Ekera will introduce uh, a second vessel. So this will be uh, in addition to what happened last year. Uh, otherwise, uh, we are not aware of any uh, any uh, huge impact, uh, so the volumes and frequencies should be uh, close to what it was. Of course, uh, uh, we need to bear in mind that uh, in the first quarter uh, we had the maintenance and therefore uh, the total number uh, tends to be smaller than was in 2018. So, so a second line hopefully will uh, uh, fill this gap uh, in, in, in the total number of calls. And cruise business, uh, in terms of vessel calls, we uh, uh, hope to achieve the same uh, level as last year, uh, but uh, a and, and little bit increase uh, in, in the volume of passengers, because the trend of, of vessels getting bigger and bigger does continue. Uh, so we hope a little bit of increase there. Uh, next question, do you notice any positive change in volumes after the ownership change of the old oil terminal at Muga? Um, it's too early to tell. Uh, we definitely see uh, increased activity and uh, increase in speed of decision making uh, and, uh, and, and yeah, uh, we, we do uh, know that uh, they are working on, uh, on, on longer term deals uh, as well. So, uh, so yes, we, we are positive, but, uh, but not in, in yet such short term um, 
time, uh, even though uh, we have uh, seen some some increased flows as well for the for the current year. So 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 we we hope this change will will have positive impact. Um, next question. Uh, how big are the concessions given to LNG chip operators on annualized basis? I'm not certain what uh, is the idea in terms of uh, uh, of discounts that we make, or uh, uh, it, it's with regards to uh, perspective LNG. Uh, terminal operators but uh, on the LNG uh, okay uh, it's it's the discounts so the discount is uh, is eight uh, percent uh, from the uh, from the dues um, but yeah we, we don't know how many such vessels will visit uh, we, we internally estimate that to be in around uh, half a million on annualized uh, basis, uh, but partly uh, we also had uh, a uh, LNG discount uh, also last year. So uh, uh, if we are talking about additional impact uh, compared to last year, then that would uh, be in range of two, three hundred thousand. Um, next question is the decline in number of employees this quarter a result of redundancies or or else um, we are working constantly um, to increase uh, efficiency so uh, uh, no uh, uh, one time uh, uh, developments there, but uh, as we have quite uh, tough uh, uh, salaries pressure, uh, we are we are uh, throughout our subsidiaries and and the parent company as well, um, having efficiency plans internally uh, that we want to achieve each year. These are linked linked to our uh, bonus plans as well. So. So this is uh, on our table uh, regularly, and 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 we we want this trend to to continue, and and we are looking for efficiency um, every quarter, every month, every week uh, on things to do uh, better, and and this is just uh, one way to try to cope with uh, with the pressure of uh, of salaries increase. Uh, in next question, in percentage terms, what were adjustments made to fuel CPI and wage inflation? Um, that's a little bit hard to, uh, to to comment with one figure because the fuel price changes are uh, uh, made quarterly, and they are uh, they are depending on the price changes of diesel fuel price in Estonia. So uh, if you statistically pull up uh, changes in, in uh, diesel prices for Estonia, then you, uh, there you can see the, um, uh, the impact. Um, CPI and wage inflation uh, are carried uh, uh, over, not 100%, but, uh, but partly. So um, I, I would say that some uh, three percent on average uh, on, on on CPI and and uh, and a bit higher from from the salaries overall something be between three and four percent impact. Uh, but Potnik only has CPI, so there the impact um, is is smaller, uh, something uh, from two to three percent. Uh, uh, then we have a question: uh, How are the gold gold ironing plants going? I'm not certain. I 
I um, understand what is referred to here. If uh, the person sending the present uh, the questions could a little bit uh, elaborate uh, what they had in mind. Okay, it's uh, it's short to ship power. Um, yes, this um, project is uh, well underway. Uh, uh, we have we are uh, at the end phase of the tender. So uh, uh, this year we want to start uh, uh, building of the grid in the uh, old city harbor for the liner vessels. Uh, so we all together plan to uh, uh, build at least uh, for three uh, vessels and uh, and as I said we have had uh, tendering for construction of this uh, it's not yet uh, finalized but uh, but hope to have it finalized and start uh, the actual construction uh, this month uh, this quarter uh, latest uh, third quarter so um, uh, in in 2020, uh, we should be ready to uh, uh, start uh, uh, providing short power for passenger uh, vessels, uh, starting uh, with the regular uh, lines uh, visiting Old City Harbor. Uh, it will not uh, be available for cruise vessels uh, because uh, uh, the cruise vessels uh, uh, power consumption uh, is about eight times the one for the regular ferries and we just don't have enough uh, uh, power available to provide that so the the first stage will only be for uh, uh, regular passenger uh, line Okay, this uh, uh, seems to be the uh, last question. Uh, okay, uh, one uh, detailed more. Could we share CapEx uh, for the project? Uh, um, from the top of my head, uh, I think it was around maybe one million, but I could be mistaken. Uh, that's uh, uh, that's something uh, we would need to to, to follow up, um, uh, and and that's divided between the op ferry operators. We only do the shore uh, side, but but something uh, close to give and take one million, I think, was. Um, yeah, we will uh, will follow up uh, uh, this. Uh, if 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 you can uh, send us uh, your your email, the person asking this uh, will will follow up uh, on that uh, later on. Uh, thank you all for for this active session of of questions, and uh, hopefully Waldo will be able to to join us uh, for the quarter two results uh, in. In, a, in approximately three months time. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. And I would like to remind to all the listeners that the summary of the webinar together with the presentation and link to the recording will be made available in today's investor event announcement from Tallinn Sadam. You can also listen to today's recording directly from the Nasdaq Baltic YouTube channel on webinar playlist. Again, thank you, Marco, for your time, and thank you, participants, for joining the webinar.